Hey everyone, I'm continuing to gradually upgrade my desk setup and here I've got a couple of new things to show you. The first one is a laptop stand that I hope will match the color of my MacBook. Before this moment I didn't understand why I even needed this if I could just put my laptop on the desk surface. But recently I started having pain in my neck so I decided to rise my Mac to eye level. And also now I have a bit more space under the stand which is not always enough. The second thing is one more LED strip, but this one has RGB IC tech in it. With such a strip you can basically set up multiple colors on the line and have more diverse animations. My first strip is installed on the back of my desk and this one I will put behind my monitor. Yeah, I definitely like this one. Alright, so what's up with my open source project? The work on playlist mate still in progress, even though I don't have much time in between my work and time with my family, I really wish there were more hours in a day. But still I added a couple of essential features. So when developing an application and deploying it to the cloud, there would always be sensitive properties such as database passwords, API access tokens, security keys and so on. And you definitely don't want to share it with anyone. That means if you have a public repo, you cannot push any credentials to the GitHub. And the solution is, actually there are multiple solutions, that's the beauty of programming. So the options would be to simply store values in the database, but wait, how to get access to the database then? Another way you can pass those properties using environment variables. This one is okay, but it becomes difficult to manage changes on a larger scale than just one application instance. And the good solutions are HashiCorp Vault, Kubernetes Config Map, AWS Secret Manager or alternatives from other cloud providers or a dedicated configuration server. I chose to use the last one and as my backend is fully powered by the Spring ecosystem, Spring Cloud Config would be the best match. And a few words about why it's so great. The configuration can be stored in the private git repository, all the values can be encrypted using a symmetric key or an asymmetric one, and the most amazing thing is you can change the configuration and Spring context will be refreshed automatically, so no server reboot is required. I've already applied the first two points and the third one is already on my roadmap. For that one I need a few additional steps. Deploy my configuration server, configure git webhooks and add a message broker to be able to refresh the right backend application. And yeah, all this means that I am adding one more service to the playlist mate system design. In the previous videos I have mentioned that I have a docker compose for local development and an interesting thing. By default Spring Boot Gradle plugin creates an image for AMD64 architecture and as I'm using M1 Mac these images are running in emulation and therefore I have a terrible performance when running containers on my machine. At first I thought maybe I need to adjust a bit of configuration so I would get the right images for ARM but realizing that eventually my application would be running on the Linux system in the production made me change my mind and leave it as is. By the way, in the Docker Compose some services depend on other ones, so everything should be launched in the right order. Otherwise you could get timeout errors or similar issues. In my case I need to wait for Radius, MySQL and the config server to be healthy before starting the playlist made backend. Health checks for Redis and MySQL are available out of the box, but the Spring Cloud config server image was built with cloud native build packs. The health check entry point is not included there by default and I can't make any REST calls to validate that my app is actually running. So after hours of research and troubleshooting it turned out that I simply needed to edit a couple of lines in my build.gradle and there you have it. Also I have a question for you guys. What first person view angle do you like more? This one or from a chest level? Let me know in the comments. In my opinion, both are great for different activities. 
but here is the thing. I have a kind of problem with this head mount. I feel a lot of tension from the sides and on top of my head and if I loosen this stripe it feels wobbly and insecure. And I don't know, maybe I'm not using it the right way. Also, I have another mount for my bike helmet, which I'm about to return, but I don't remember where I put it. It basically was placed here. So the reason why I'm not keeping it is the horizon line is always screwed. There is even a term for this in filmmaking. The Dutch angle, or Deutsch angle, or just German angle. Yeah, I know, weird. It's nothing to do with Dutch people. And if you google the Dutch angle, seat tights, there is an easter egg there. So mostly I am using a chest magnet mount, which is great, but I still want to have an option to shoot as I would see, from eye level. And I saw this cool DIY cap mount in Jacob Sucks at Code videos. By the way, if you are watching this, shout out to you man, this is just genius. I will do the same, but I am still missing the right screws for that. Let's go get them. Alright, the mount is ready and it definitely feels more comfortable and easier to use. I will continue working on the next ticket for the playlist mate and if you like ASMR programming, stick around for a short coding session. 